So today I'm doing a review for the fifth season, which is an adult sci fantasy novel, which I guess basically just means that it's both sci-fi and fantasy. Sci fantasy is how it's categorized when you Google it. So that's what I'm going with. So this is going to be a primarily spoiler free review. I just feel like I can convey pretty much all of my thoughts and feelings almost exclusively spoiler free. So that's really gonna be the focus of this review. And then we'll have a very brief spoiler section where I kind of elaborate on something and then we'll come back together for final thoughts. But I will warn you before the spoilers come. So the way I do my reviews is I give three pros and three cons spoiler free so that you can decide if it's the right book for you. We're gonna dive straight in with the first pros. We're gonna talk, uh, the first pro, we're gonna talk about the writing. So if you've been following my channel for any period of time, then you may have gone into this book with me expecting me to hate the writing style in this book. But this is an instance where an author did so many things that I don't enjoy, but she did it all exactly right. I tend to be a more straightforward reader as far as writing styles go. I don't tend to love super flowering, cr flowery, crazy unique writing styles. I like things pretty, you know, just standard. I, I really like the story to be the focal point as opposed to the writing. Um, N.K. Jemisin has a very unique and beautiful writing style, and it was perfect because her writing is not necessarily flowery, but it is a very unique way of stating things. But for me, the way she stated everything felt like she was just cutting to my heart that much quicker and harder with the way she worded her sentences, sort of like Frederick Bachman, the way he will word stuff in a little bit more unique way that just cuts to me a little bit faster. N.K. Jemisin's writing style, though it's very different from Frederick Bachman, her writing style hit me in a similar way. Another thing is the pacing. I, I guess I would lead more towards a plot focused writing style reader, though I do like a good balance of both. I certainly don't lean towards stories that are solely character focused. This is a character focused book. There's plenty happening, but it is slower paced and it is entirely centered around these characters. And that can be hit or miss for me. It was a big old hit for me in this one because there was so much intrigue still there. And I, it was, oh, it was so good. I was not bored for a second. Last thing is that this author in a lot of ways didn't, huh. okay, it's one of those books where you just are thrown into the middle of things and you walk along next to your characters and eventually you're gonna figure it out. And it's not a book where things are explained to you at all. You just kind of have to figure it out. Um, and that can also be a little bit hit or miss for me. I tend to really, like I'm the type of reader that doesn't complain about info dumps. I'm the type of reader that I like, I like when things are kind of not, not held my hand, like I don't need an author to hold my hand, but I do like when it doesn't feel like the author is deliberately holding information from me. This author was deliberately holding information from us, but I loved it because, and I'll, I'll touch on this a little bit more, but all the hints were there. All the information was there. We just had to puzzle it together. And I was so invested in these characters and I was so intrigued by this world that I was just along for the ride and I loved it. Moving on to a con, I will say that on the other side of things, it is so unique of a writing style and there are so many things that are done is just specifically for this book that I could see it really throwing people off. Basically everything I stated, it was all done correctly for me, but it could be wrong for the next person. And I certainly can see how this book, it seems like this book isn't polarizing. It seems like uh, people adore this series and I totally understand why, but I could see it being a polarizing book because things are so unique. The other thing is that I did buddy read this over on my Patreon and several people did mention to me on my Patreon as well as over on Instagram where I tend to update people through my stories, how my reading progress is going. I've had multiple people say, if English, pe multiple people tell me where English isn't their first language, they really have a hard time keeping up because the way she states stuff is so unique, it doesn't lend itself well to that. That's not saying across the board, this is how it is. I've just had multiple people point that out. So that would certainly be a hindrance in certain instances. My next pro is going to be, stick with me here, is that this book is extremely dark. I don't think you would call it grim dark, 
but it is extremely dark. There are a lot of very devastating things going on in this world, and everything is stated very bluntly. Our author does not hold back any punches, and most of these scenes are gonna hit you hard in the gut, or at least they certainly did me. That said, and this is another testament to the amazing, amazing writing style, is that with this world being so dark and with so many horrendous things being described to us throughout the story, I just felt like it was balanced so well. I felt like the author handled discussing these things so well because she almost put it in a very emotionless way where she would just state these horrific things happening without shoving it down your throat without bashing you over the head with it. A lot of people will use the term torture porn for books like these where they're so incredibly dark and I don't think that this book could be called that because she does not give you pages and pages of details. She states it in a blunt way that still packs the punch without punching you over and over and over and over and over again. And I really appreciated that. I just thought she handled it perfectly. On the other side of that though, this world is extremely dark and there are a lot of things happening that could make the punch last. Is that the wrong way of wording that? There's a lot of horrific, horrific things that happen and they are stated very bluntly and she doesn't hold back her punches. So it hurts pretty bad. One thing that's brought up repeatedly throughout the, this story is very brutal child abuse. I will say that I don't think at any point that the author did it for shock factor. I think that every single time child abuse is shown on the page, it's for the purpose of the story and the world, and it's all very intentional, and I don't think it's ever done insensi insensitively, so maybe that'll make you feel better about it. Maybe that'll help you be willing to pick it up, but I will say that near the end, even throughout this entire book, I thought as soon as I finish book one, I'm going to dive straight into book two, but near the end, some things happened that ended up punching me a little bit too hard, and I've decided that I'm going to take a break and read something else in between. I'm still going to read book two very quickly, very soon, but I am going to take a breather in between because it, it hurt me a little bit too much as a mom of a young child. Some stuff happened in the end that was a little bit too hard for me. But I still stand by everything that I said. I still think that it was intentional, purposeful, and handled very well. It's just, for me, it was too much. So I do want to state that in my pros and cons that a con for some people would be that it'll probably be too much for some people. Last thing that I want to talk about that I loved is that the clues were all there. There's this big reveal that happens and that's not a spoiler because you know from the beginning that this is all building up to something very intentional. You know from the beginning that there are certain things, um, I guess I'll say what it is because you know from the beginning about it. Uh, there is, there are three perspectives that we follow. Two of the perspectives are written in third person perspective, which is what we usually read, um, or well, third or first is common. And then the last perspective is written in second person. So you did this, you weren't sure what was happening. But at the same time, you know who the character is. You know that you isn't you, the reader, you is a character on the page, but it's written as if it's to that character, which can throw some people off. It certainly threw me off the first time I tried to read this book. It didn't bother me the second time, but we know that there's a reason for it being written this way. We just don't know what that reason is. We don't know what's going on. Um, and I, <laughs> all the clues are there. The author does not hide this from you. As the reader, she does not try to keep you from discovering it. She doesn't try to make it a big reveal that happens and blows your minds, your mind. She gives you deliberate clues all throughout the entire story. Now, I buddy read this over on my Patreon and with my friend Joe from Not So Average Joe. Um, and so I was discussing it with a bunch of people and we all kind of collectively figured it out because, I mean, Jen from, from the book Refuge is the one that realized it first, but when she did, we were all like, yes, because I noticed this and I noticed this and I, and we all kind of came together and we were like, look at all of these clues. So the clues are all there. I'm not sure I could have found them all myself um, if I were reading it all by myself. So this is a great book to buddy read for that purpose, but they are all there and you can find them. You do have to read this book very carefully because it is a book that you can't just like fly through. 
Uh, but the clues are all there. She gives the reader every opportunity to figure it out themselves. And whether you figure it out yourself or not, it still is such a fun, dynamic, amazing reveal. So I loved that she deliberately wanted us to find it without spelling it out for us. You have to look for it, you have to be paying attention, but you can get there on your own and it doesn't erase the impact of the moment when it happens. It was perfectly executed in my opinion. My last con is kind of a stretch because I really don't have a lot of negative things to say about this book. And my last con is just that there's really not a lot of questions answered by the end of this book. You get your big reveal, you get a couple of things, uh, you get a couple pieces of the puzzle for the world building and the general setting, but this is really a ground laying first book, which some books are more so than others. This certainly is one where at the end you don't have a ton more information than you have at the beginning, but I didn't mind this because it was such a great beginning and I feel like I really am understanding this world fairly well, as well as I can at this point, and I can't wait to discover more from it. I'm obsessed with these characters and I can't wait to see what she's gonna do with them next. It's so well done, but you really don't have a lot of answers at the end of it. It's a book that you're gonna wanna read the sequel pretty quickly if you liked the first book because you still don't really know that much. That would definitely be a con for a lot of people. It wasn't for me, but hey. Put it out there. Now I'm going to go into some brief spoilers um, just to kind of clarify the clues because I, in my reading vlog I did mention that the clues are there and a couple people asked for me to tell them what the clues were so I am going to mention that briefly but obviously you don't want that if you don't want spoilers so jump to this timestamp on the screen wherever I put it on the screen if you don't want the spoilers but you still want to hear my concluding thoughts and if you do want spoilers stick around because I'm talking about them now. So I'm sure I didn't catch all the clues and I haven't researched to see what all the clues are throughout the book, but some of the things that we noticed were great. First of all, Demaya, the young character, we know that she's a child. Um, Cyanite, we know that she is around 26. She's about my age. And then Esun is in her, I think, 40s. So we know that these three characters are in three different ages. The big twist, if you don't know, is that all three characters they be the same person. So the first thing, it's not the first thing we noticed, uh, but the first thing that comes up is in the prologue, I believe it's in the prologue, it says that this town that they, or this place that they're in, it says that this place has been destroyed. It's no longer there, it's gone. And then I think in the next chapter, Demaya says, hey, let's go to this place, but it's gone. So either the author messed up or Demaya is in a past timeline before the thing got destroyed. Another thing is that it's repeatedly stated throughout the book that when, that, that it's common in this world for characters to change their names. So um, oftentimes when some big event happens, when something goes on with them, uh, where they're entering a new stage of life, they basically change their identity as well. It's not necessary, but it happens. And as soon at one point even says that she's jealous of Alabaster, because he hasn't had a name change and Asun mentions that she's had several. The last thing, really the nail in the coffin, uh, the last big thing at least, was that um, at one point when we're in Cyanite's perspective, she switches into first person and then she switches right back out of it. I think it's only one sentence where she is you. I think that's all the ones that I wrote down, but let me flip through my tabs real quick and see if I see anything else. Ah yes, here's a spot where as soon is almost called Cyanite. That's, I mean, you know, it could have been someone else, I guess. It could have been another S name, but it's indicated that one of her previous names is S, starts with an S. Oh yeah, this is a big one. Okay, so there's a point where, uh, okay, let me see what's going on. Okay, so they're talking about how uh, they would break the hands of, of the other origins. And then there's a line where it says, cyanite flinches, remembering the sound of ripping tendons, the palm of her hand stings sharply. Where earlier in the book, we know that, uh, Dagum Rafa, is that his name? The bad guy? We know that he broke Demaya's hand uh, to help teach her control or to make sure that she is in control of her powers. It's that one, to make sure that she's in control. Anyway, he broke her hand 
Um, and then it's it's talking about how her hand hurts from a memory of it being broken. That was a big one. I'm sure there are even more. Those are just the ones that our group found. I'm not gonna go into predictions. A lot of times I talk about predictions in these. I really don't have any predictions for this for the next book. I'm going in pretty much completely blind. Okay, so now we're done with spoilers and we're just going to talk about my final thoughts on the book. So um, diving back in, this is spoiler free again. We're all back together. Uh, my final thoughts on the book is are that it was phenomenal. I really think that the execution in basically every way was perfect. I really can't think of a single complaint I have about this book as far as execution goes. I also don't have a complaint of the characters. I just think that this book was brilliant. I think as far as technical and pretty much anything objective, I want to give this book five stars. I think that it was near perfect. Um, as far as my enjoyment level, it's more of a 4.5 just because of that one thing that hit me a little bit too hard and really made me need to take a step back from the book, but that's totally a personal thing and that's not something that the author did wrong. That's just me being a mom. So really, this is a five-star book to me. I'm giving it five stars. I think it deserves all five of the stars, even though in my emotions, it's more of a 4.5 in my, in my like enjoyment level, but this is a five-star book. This book is, I think, flawless. I really don't have any true complaints about it. I can totally see why people, some people would not enjoy the experience of reading this book. It really does feel like something that plenty of people would be turned off by, but I thought it was near perfect. I can't wait to read book two. I am going to wait to read book two for my own sanity, but after I finish uh, Wheel of Time 4, I'm diving straight into book two, I'm pretty sure, because I can't wait to see what's going on. I will wait, but I can't wait. Anyway, those are all my thoughts on the fifth season. I highly recommend it if it sounds like something that's that you would enjoy. It certainly is a, a book that you have to read slowly and pay a ton of attention to. It's not an easy book to read. It's not a fun, quick read. So go into it knowing that. Um, if you have the ability to read it with someone, do, because <laughs> there's a lot to discuss. Uh, but anyway, highly recommend. Loved this book. If you've read it, if you want to talk spoilers, make sure you do the spoiler space, space, space thing so that you don't accidentally spoil people. Uh, but if you've read it, if you plan to read it, chat with me more about it in the comments. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.